We are back at Rainier Rallycross, and folks, we have a good one for you today. The start of the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament. I just want to make sure I heard that right. Did you say Super Treasure Hunt? That's right. I said Super Treasure Hunt. These teams have taken Hot Wheels Super Treasure Hunts and drilled out the posts and put plastic tires on them to get them ready for this race. Do you have any idea how much Hot Wheels collectors are going to freak out when they hear that these drivers are destroying Super Treasure Hunts? Those things are worth like 50 bucks. Remember, Ned, they're just a toy and it only costs a dollar. There are eight teams who have entered this tournament that I clearly have more dollars than cents. Let's go on and meet the drivers in group one. But first, we have a driver there's no stranger to this channel. It's Arlo from Arlo Racing, driving a 1963 Super Treasure Hunt Studebaker. Arlo is the reigning champion on Rainy Rally Cross currently, and we expect him to do anything he can to defend that title. Next up, we have Marcus Firegon, driving for the Canadian Driving Club. Patrick, where did it go? Where did what go? The fire, it's gone. Get it? Fire gone? Ha! Hilarious. Clearly somebody loves their dad jokes. Speaking of dad jokes, this next driver drives for Manchild Motorsports. Do you even think about what you say before you open enough? To be honest, most of the time I just kind of wing it. Well, maybe you should, because before you know it, you might be out of here and Clyde might be back. There's absolutely no way they'd bring Clyde back. He was terrible. At least we can agree on that. And our last rider is Numskull, driving for Numskull Racing, but he needs no introduction, folks. All right, we're gonna hop right into race one action. These drivers will compete in four laps, and the two drivers with the top score will be moving on to the next round. That's right, two move on and two go to the crusher to get smashed. Wait a second, we're seriously smashing Super Treasure Hunts? <laughs> just kidding. We wouldn't do that to Super Treasure Hunts. Whew, thank goodness, because these trucks have to run a tournament at the Big O right after the tournament here at Rainy Rallycross. We missed a little bit of action there, so we're gonna swap back over to the Tiny Track Cars Instant Replay and slow us down for you. First, we see Numskull going a little too fast over the Lane 3 hump. That hump, you wanna hit your brakes, slow down, and accelerate up that hill into the turn. You do not wanna be catching air in that jump. He is out of there, with DNF for him. And then you see Arlo coming in too fast in the S-curves, flying off the track, and almost getting trapped underneath. Meanwhile, Papa Pugsley makes a break for the finish line and takes four points and the win in race number one, followed by Marcus Firegon. A devastating first race for Numskull and Arlo. That's definitely not how you want to start a tournament. You're absolutely right. A DNF in race number one is hard to come back from. And another thing we missed in that first race was our brand new track timer. That timer goes down in the middle of the second and will give us the times of the winning vehicle for each race. And we'll be posting those on an overall scoreboard to see who has the fastest time on Rainier Rally. One race down and we have Papa Pugsley in the lead with four points, followed by Marcus Firegon, and again, Arlo and Numskull with zero. The 10 second board is out. We will see Nitro across there and then we'll send it down the track for race number two. Watch that timer in your top right hand corner. Numskull first of the jump, but Numskull off the track. Numskull slides out and is out of this in race number two as well. Arlo leads it. Arlo battling with Papa Pugsley and takes the win in race number two by roughly a half of a car, but we're gonna watch that from the finish line camp. We have another rough race here for Numskull. As you see him right there, he nose dives out that first jump and pops up off the track and is unable to recover from that. Unfortunately, that Ford Mustang is out of there for race number two. He will collect zero points. Almost hits Arlo as he passes right there. Let's watch that again. Numskull pops off the track. Arlo squeezes by. And as we know, Arlo was able to take it. He is into that loop fast. Papa Pugsley is very competitive as well. And they converge in the last jump into the straightaway. There they bump into each other and battle for the finish line. It looks like Papa Pugsley and Arlo have a little friendly rivalry out there, bumping into each other. We'll watch that from the finish line cam as they come down there. Arlo by about almost a car as we stop it at the finish line. Freeze frame it there. And Mr. Consistency, Marcus Firegon comes by and gets two points in this race. And it's Papa Pugsley out front with seven points. Will anyone be able to catch him? He is out front with seven points, but it is not over until the fat lady sings. Anything can happen here on Rainier Rally Cross Track. They're out of there. Numbskull in lane two this time. The fast lane that has got that asphalt treatment to slow you down a little bit, but it does not seem to be slowing him down. He takes the win ahead of Papa Pugsley and is able to collect four points after those two DNFs. Yeah, four points and an 8.83, which is a great time for this track, but not as fast as Papa Pugsley's original run there. You see in that first freeze frame, Numbskull was actually way far behind in this race. 
but lane number two is fast. Once you get past that asphalt section, he is out of there. And again, Papa Pugsley gets cut off at the finish line. How come everybody seems to be ganging up on Papa Pugsley? Well, Ned, you know what to say. Rubbing is racing. And they're bumping and they're rubbing. And we'll watch that again as Numbskull takes the win in race number three, followed by Papa Pugsley and Arlo and Marcus Firegon trotting across the finish line, picking up one more point. All right, we have Papa Pugsley still out front with 10 points and a tie between Marcus Firegon and Arlo. But Numbskull is fast. He has four. Will he be able to come back and take the win. All it's going to take is one DNF for one of these cars, and they will be out of it. Race four is underway. It is still anyone's game. Keep an eye on that timer, folks. We'll see if a track record here is set. And we got Numbskull and Arlo battling in those right-hand side lanes as they go through the loops. Arlo flies off the track, and Numbskull takes the win. But what happens between Arlo and Papa Pugsley? We do not We do not know. We do not know. We do not. I want some donuts, dang it. All right, watch Arlo and Numbskull as they go into the 360 here. They come out, Numbskull is ahead. Yeah, as we know, he takes the win, but keep your eyes on Arlo right here. He's sideways off the track, bounces off the side, turns a perfect bail roll, almost lands it, gives a little squirrely, and then out of nowhere, Papa Pugsy comes and tries to take the win from him, and we have a photo finish. We do not know who won this race. Patrick, we sure as heck do know who won this race. It was Numbskull. The battle you were talking about was for second place between Papa Pugsley and Arlo. We'll slow that down for you. Take a closer look at this action from Arlo. He does a barrel roll, catches his back, does a quadruple flip anonymous, and then spins across the finish line. And folks, we reviewed this footage over and over and over and over and, and over and even more times. And we were still unable to determine who won this race after talking to the officials they have said these cars have tied. They could not tell who's won. And in that situation, in case of a tie, both cars will receive points for second place. So uh, what does it look like in the scorecard? A 4-3-3-1 or a 4-3-3-2? Numbskull will get four for the win. Papa Pugsy and Arlo will get three for the tie. And Marcus Firegon will get seven. Folks, there you have it. You have Papa Pugsy out front with 13 points. And Arlo barely sneaking in for second place to move on to the next round. All right, Radical, we got two trucks heading to the finals. And there we see the next four drivers that will appear in group two in the next video. A huge thank you for joining us on a Super Treasure Hunt tournament group number one. We'll be back with more Super Treasure Hunts before you know it. Hey, it's Patrick, leave a message. Yeah, Patrick, racing Super Treasure onto the huge mistake. Those are collectibles, not race cars. I'm out of here. No more following or subscribing. You've lost a viewer and the collecting community's respect. Goodbye. All right, tight track cards fans. Quick shout out to our passionate caller. Your fire is noted. And hey, maybe we'll start a collectible corner just for you. But for now, it's showtime. Let's meet the daredevils of group two in our Super Treasure Hunt tournament. These cars are about to prove they're more than just pretty faces on a shelf. That's right, Patrick, and speaking of pretty faces, it doesn't get much prettier than this Lamborghini Sesto Elemento driven by Dreddy from Mini Mafia Motors. That might be the first time I've ever seen a Lamborghini rally car. Next up, we have Rez from Blue Line Racing driving an actual rally car, a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Ah, uh, another Evo. Enough of these things already. Whoa, easy now. Clyde will come after you for saying things like that. Next up, we have Ra Sunga driving a Mazda RX-3. Super treasure hunt. The only thing super about that car is his blue tires. Yes, Ned, thank you for stating the obvious. He does have blue tires. And last but not least, we have Lone Star driving for Live Young Diecast in a 68 Cougar. Ha, Cougar. I knew a few of those back in my prime. I am assuming you're referring to the Mercury Cougar, not something else, correct? Yes, exactly, the Mercury Cougar, exactly what I was talking about. Okay, we're at the line for race number one of group two. These four cars are here to lay it all on the line. We'll see what happens. That's right, only two of these cars move into the finals. Which two will it be? Which two cars are going to the Super Treasure Hunt finals? Look at that timer on the top right-hand side. I believe that might be a new track record. We'll slow it down for you. The tiny track cars into the replay. Lone Star gets massive air over that jump, but there you see Rez on the inside lane, lane number two, the one that slowed down in the beginning. It does not seem to slow him down, folks, and he will cross the finish line, and I believe 
that might be a new track record. But folks, there's only been four cars before him on this track, so setting a track record doesn't mean much. It's going to be broken over and over again. That right there is the top score, an 8.556 by Rez is currently the top score on Randy Rallycross. Hey Patrick, how'd your buddy with the blue tires do? First of all, Ned, he's not my buddy. I do not know any of these drivers, but he did get last place. We'll see what he does in this race there, either for race number two. This time it's ready in the Lamborghini in that lane number two that is slowed down with the asphalt treatment here. Let's see how he pulls out. And again, it is Rez out in front. And again, it looks like he set another track record, but Lone Star was fast. Lone Star was right on his tail. Unfortunately, we did not get a time for Lone Star. Look at that air by Lone Star and the Mercury Cougar. He lands a little rough. There you see the Rez up on his side as he's hitting that turn as fast as possible up into the 360s and down towards the finish line. As we know, it is Rez out in front, which sets the new lap record here. Time track cars with folks. Lone Star is fast. Look out for him. You know, Rainier Rallycross is such a sophisticated track, but somehow we don't know the time of the guy that got second place. What's up with that? Oh, Ned, always being so negative. Just be happy we have a timer at all. And just like that, just like I said, Reds sets the lap record again with an 8.450, holding spots one and two in the Mitsubishi Lance Revolution. He's out front with eight points, Dreddy and Lone Star tied for second, and Ross Longard coming behind and fourth. That's right, we have a close battle between Lone Star and Dreddy in that Lamborghini Sesto Elemento. But folks, Rez is fast. Will anyone be able to catch him? They're out of there. It looks like Rez again is out front. He gets up on his side. Dreddy pulls up by his side. And then out of nowhere, Lone Star takes the lead. Lone Star to the finish line and beats Rez with a time of 8.616, folks. Well, holy moly. I didn't even think Lone Star was in the race. Look at him. So far back right there, but he is in lane two. We know that lane is fast once you get past that asphalt section. There's a battle between Dreddy and Reds there in the close lanes, but Lone Star up and over that bridge and out in front. And we'll play that for you again to watch those three cards converge on the finish line. What a close race. We'll watch that from the finish line cam. You see right there, Reds jumps almost over top of Dreddy and takes second place, but does not beat Lone Star. And folks, Lone Star has hit the leaderboard with one of the fastest laps sitting in spot number three. Hey Patrick, what's better than a good looking Cougar? Oh boy, here we go. What? A good looking Cougar from the Lone Star State. You know what they say, everything's bigger in Texas. All right, I can confidently say that we aren't talking about the Mercury Cougar. And are you implying that you like large Cougars? All right, anyways, back to the races. We're out of there for race number four. It is Lone Star getting out from these Valley with Reds yet again as they cross the finish line. And Lone Star puts down a scorching fast time of 8.366, taking over the leaderboard for the fastest lap here on Ringier Rallycross. Watch why I say a little bit slower. There is no question that Lone Star was out in front this whole entire race, but Reds gives him a run for his money as they cross the finish line, losing by only one car length. And there, Dreddy comes behind, and old faithful Raw Sun God in that Mazda RX3 trickles into the finish line. Watch that finish between Reds and Lone Star there. Great racing by those two. It looks like those two will be moving on to the finals. Patrick, I'm not going to assume anything because I can't add up all those points that Lone Star and Reds have, but I'm pretty sure they did. They are the ones that are moving on to the Super Treasure Hunt Finals. But first, we have to congratulate Lone Star on the fastest lap ever to be set on Rainier Rallycross. Huge congrats to Lone Star. Looks like him and Reds dominate the fastest lap leaderboard. And congratulations to both of them, Reds and Lone Star, for moving on with 14 points and 13 points. And folks, here it's your Super Treasure Hunt Tournament at Ringer Rally Cross Finals Final Four. Arlo, Rez, Pablo Pugsley, and Lone Star. Yeehaw! Can't wait to wreck more Super Treasure Hunts and make more people angry. We're back at Rainier Rally Cross for the Super Treasure Hunt Finals. The competitors are at Ned, the- what are you doing? What? We're supposed to start with our introduction and then introduce the drivers in the finals. Patrick, don't worry about it. I watch a ton of videos on YouTube. All the experts say, cut right to the action. We don't need that introduction. We're going straight into racing every video. I have a feeling you might be wrong in this one. And God dang it, you made us miss the first race. I'm gonna cut right here and play that introduction now. Then we're gonna meet our drivers in this race. Do not press that button. Now is a terrible time to play the introduction. Even worse than the beginning.
sorry about that, y'all. Ned had to step away. It turns out he was a little upset that I stopped and put the introduction. We missed the first race, but as you see right there, Arlo takes the win in race number one. And unfortunately, Rez did not finish. As you saw, he wrecked over that jump going up into 360s. This is our bracket, folks. This is the final four of the Rainier Rally Cross Super Treasure Hunt Tournament and of others that have been part of this tournament. Thank you so much to those people. But we're gonna meet our drivers right here in the finals and then we're gonna head into race two action. First up, we have Arlo. As we know, Arlo was the winner of the last tournament here at Rainy Rally, the Fast and the Furious Tournament. Will he be able to take the victory again in the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament? We find out today. Next up, we have Papa Pugsley, who needs no introduction. We call him Papa P over here. He's a man child motorsports, and he's driving that custom 69 Chevy Super Treasure Hunt. Then we have one of the fastest cars on the track, Rez from Blue Line Racing, driving, yes, Craig's favorite, a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. I think it's an Ego 10. And last but not least, we have Lone Star from Live Young Diecast, driving that Mercury Cougar, the car Mercury Cougar, nothing else, just the car, the Cougar, and we know he's fast. I think he does have the current track record. The 10 second board is out for race number two, the finals of the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament. Nitro will come across the screen and then you will send it down the track. They're out of there. It looks like Lone Star is out front, but Rez is fast. Papa Pugsley pulls on Rez. Who's gonna take it going into the finals straight away? It's Lone Star taking the win in race number two. All right, I'm back. Had to take a moment there. I was a little bit heated, but what did I miss? Um, you missed the entire second race. Well, then I'll commentate the race two replay and catch myself up. There you see Papa Pugsley moving past Rez as they go into the 360, but Lone Star is out there in lane number one, and he is fast. He hits that jump, almost flips sideways there. Look at him up on one wheel. One wheel, and then he crosses the finish line in first place, followed by Papa Pugsley, Rez, and then Arlo coming in fourth place. Yeah, Dad, it looks like Lone Star might have hit the leaderboard. Yes, there it is. He hit the leaderboard with an 8.516. Unfortunately, he knocks himself off the leaderboard. All right, end race number two. We have a tie for first place between Papa Pugsley and Lone Star. Anything can happen here at Rainier Rally Cross. Race number three, they're out of there. Right out of the gate, looks like a battle between Rez and Otto there. Otto gets up on his side and rolls it over into 360, folks. He will be out of for race number three, and Rez walks away, runs away, sprints away. He sprinted, look at that time, 8.4, sprints away with the victory in race number three. Let's slow that down for you until your closer look here. Otto gets up on that curb, and as he enters the 360, you'll watch again. He unfortunately rolls it over nice and slowly, was unable to keep that truck on four tires. But look at Rez. Rez is fast, and he is a lightning bolt there as he bounces across that jump and across the finish line. Screw the finals. The real competition is between Rez and Lone Star to see who can set the fastest lap on Rainer Rallycross. That is exciting beep right there. Did you just beep with your mouth instead of cussing? I sure did. This is a kid-friendly channel, and our editors are on vacation, so we can't put the bleep noise in there afterwards. There you see the 8.4, another track fastest lap by Rez. He knocks himself off that leaderboard. And going into the last race, Lone Star is ahead by one point. Papa Pugsley is right behind him. And nut, folks, Rez is not out of it with six. Anything can happen. One DNF from one of these top drivers, and the game has been changed. That's right, we've seen it all on Rainier Rally Cross. But they're out of there for race number four. It looks like Lone Star is out front. Will Lone Star have a flawless run and take the victory? Lone Star is a rocket that rezzes on his tail, and Lone Star takes the win. And folks, it looks like he set another track record with the 8.383, and folks, he needed it because Rez was right on his tail. But that did not matter. Lone Star was fast. This was a flawless run by Lone Star, the fastest one we've seen yet. Literally the fastest lap we've seen on Rainy Rally Cross at an 8.383. Uh, Patrick, I think I think you're wrong. I think the fastest lap is actually set by Lone Star at an 8.366, not an 8.383. But nonetheless, Lone Star is still at the top of the fastest lap leaderboard. And folks, Lone Star has taken the victory of our super treasure hunt tournament here at Rainier Rallycross. 
Congratulations, Lone Star. And y'all, the super treasure hunt madness is not over. These eight vehicles are going to battle it on the big O as well very, very soon. That's right. We're going to go into our NASCAR Generations Tournament qualifying at the big O. And then we're going to hop back to finish these eight cars super treasure hunt style at the big O. A huge thank you to all eight drivers in this tournament. A huge thank you for building a super treasure hunt and sending it into our track. Also, a quick shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you so much for being a channel member. That little bit helps us keep going, helps us create videos. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. And for those of you who can't afford to be a channel member, we totally understand. However, you can still support Tiny Track Cars and let us keep making videos simply by sharing this link with a friend, liking the video, dropping a comment, and just showing your support for the channel overall. So thank you so much to everybody in our huge, huge, and growing families out there. Patrick, you forgot to thank Russ at Schoolheads for building this awesome track for us. Ah, yes, a huge thank you to Russ for designing this amazing track for both Ring Your Rally Cross and the Big O. Russ is awesome, check him out at spoolheads.com. And Ned, where, where are you? It sounds too far away. Yeah, I left early. I'm going to meet Numbscott Ring Your Brewing. Come on, come with us. All right, folks, we are out of here. Thanks again for watching. We are going to drink some beer at Rainier Brewing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the Big O after a short break, and we have the Super Treasure Hunts who are coming from the Rainier Rallycross track, and they'll be competing on the Big O to see who will take top points overall. That's right, Ned. We are back, and we are going to head right into Group 1, Race 1. These drivers will do eight races on this track. Each race is two laps around the Big O. Already leading the path, we have Arlo in that Studebaker, followed by Marcus Firegun and Rez, and that Evo Rez was able to make it past. He tries to get past Arlo. Arlo closes the door on him and takes off. Rez falls back, spins around to see where Dreddy is in that beautiful Lamborghini, and they fly across the finish line for a successful race number one. Let's sew it down for you. Man, Patrick, it feels really good to be back at the Big O, and these super treasure hunts are looking beautiful. Race one is already action-packed here. Rez makes that beautiful pass on Marcus Firegun and heads for Arlo, but Arlo decides to steer to the right and block him from going around on the outside, spinning Rez around, but he's able to hold the second place position with Dreddy coming in third. And folks, we do not see Marcus Firegun. There he is on his roof in that beautiful green Camaro. And there you see Arlo leaving the pack with four points after race number one. Before we head into race number two, we're going to check out the Super Treasure Hunt standings overall, folks. Now, because we only raced four laps on Rainier Rallycross, and we're racing eight laps on the Big O, we're going to be taking the driver's scores from Rainier Rallycross and doubling them. Then we'll take the points from Rainier Rallycross, add them to everyone's points from the Big O, and we'll have a grand champion of the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament overall. Now, folks, if these drivers want any chance of winning, they need to make it to the finals. Because the points are total overall points added up across all races, being in the finals gets you more opportunities to add up more points. That's right, Patrick. It will be interesting to see who moves on to the finals in the big O. Here we have Rez taking off, putting on a clinic out there. He is having a flawless run, slight drift in the last turn, and down to the straightaway, folks. 15.2 second run. That, folks, I believe is a new track record 
for the big O. We're gonna slow that down for you and see what happened. We already know Rez pulled away from the pack, but what happened with everybody else? And that's it. Nothing else happened with everybody else. Rez was so far out there, nobody was even in the replay. We watch him cruise on the track, and we see the final turn cam there from the overhead blimp view. A great view at seeing Rez drift to the finish line, and then you see Arlo, Dreddy, and Marcus Firegon finish off two, three, and four. We have a tie for second place with seven points between Rez and Arlo. R and R, not Railroad, Rez and Arlo. Race number three, Dreddy takes the pole position. Inside front, will he be able to hold off Rez? It looks like Rez is already on the outside, but Dreddy gets a push by Arlo, but it's not enough. Arlo on the inside of Dreddy, but Rez is out there. Arlo rolls over. Will Dreddy make it by him? We don't know because we're focused on Rez because he's so far ahead. Will he be able to put down another awesome track time? Folks, 15.033, another track record here at the Big O. And there you see Dreddy trickling in for second place. Unknown with his time, but it was not as fast as Rez. Holy smokes, Rez just pulled down a record track time from the outside lane. Imagine what he could do from the inside. Will he get that opportunity? We're slowing that down for you. Arlo makes a really good pass on Dreddy there, but gets a little too high up in the turn and flips over. He is out of it for this race three, but we do know Dreddy and Marcus Firegun did make it by him and finished second and third place. Yeah, that's right, Patrick. That track is still on fire from Rez whipping around there faster than a banshee out there. Rez out there with 11 points in first place, then followed by Dreddy and Arlo tied for second. Here we go. Right before the halftime, we are going to get into race number four. Arlo is in the pole position, but Dreddy is on the outside getting pushed by Rez. Will they be able to make it by Arlo? No, Arlo holds the lead. And there is some battling going on. Rez wants to take the inside on Dreddy, but Arlo puts on a block for him. He does make it on the inside of Dreddy and passing, but Dreddy passes right him right back and takes second place, followed by Rez in reverse. But Arlo taking the win with a 16.933 track time. That is some racing action that we like to see here on the big O. We're gonna slow it down for you. Arlo on the inside, Dreddy and Rez on the outside. Arlo cuts up and does a little block on Dreddy and Rez. Rez tried to take the inside, but both Dreddy and Rez are pushing Arlo, and there's where Rez squeezes by Dreddy on the inside, but tries to cut him off and spins out, and Dreddy takes advantage of it by going low into the last turn and taking second place and putting some more points on the board. But Arlo takes four points. That gets the score a little closer. We had 13 for Rez, Arlo at 11, Dreddy 10, and unfortunately Marcus Firegon has had a trouble, has had trouble keeping that car on its tires. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Marcus Firegan might be out of this one, but there is still a battle for first, second, and third between Arlo, Rez, and Dreddy. Looks like Dreddy falls back there. Arlo still out in front, but getting pressured by Rez, but Rez does spin out, but he's in reverse. Will Dreddy be able to catch him? Arlo now in reverse. Arlo and Dreddy both in reverse, and they cross the finish line. Bumper to bumper, both in reverse. It has scorching 15.466 time, which is a very respectable time. And then there comes Dreddy. Putting some points on the board is what we like to see. All right, let's slow this down for you. Arlo and Rez battling it out. They take the high road on that big first turn there. Rez spins out, unfortunately, giving a little bit of gap to Arlo. But Arlo spins out here, and Rez is able to catch up. Let's watch into that last turn as they go down the final straightaway. Rez gains some ground on him, and as they cross the finish line, Again, they are bumper to bumper, and I think, no, we won't see Dreddy come in. But we just see Dreddy come in. Dreddy, where are you? Nope, sorry, we're gonna start the next race. We don't have time to wait for Dreddy. Let's start race number six. Now we have Marcus Firegon in the pole position, getting pushed by Rez. Would Dreddy and Arlo be able to make it on the outside? It looks like Rez is pushing hard enough to get Marcus Firegon out front. Marcus Firegon sideways, struggling to hold on that first position. Rez passing the inside. Will anyone else get by Marcus Fargon? Rez spinning out completely. Folks, we have a battle for first place between Rez, Marcus Fargon, and Arlo. And Rez is able to hold it out. And folks, Marcus Fargon getting pushed down the track, takes second place and the best position he has seen all day at the Big O here. Yeah, Patrick, all three drivers seemed like they wanted to get by Marcus Fargon. Rez finds the gap there on the inside, but unfortunately gets a little squirrely and does a 
extra super duper 360, 1080, 540, 720. I don't even know what he did there. There's a lot of spinning. And then as we go into the finish line straight, they are all bunched up there for first, second, and third. Dreddy following in the back. And another four points for Rez, putting him at 20 points in the lead, followed by Arlo at 17, folks. And remember, only two drivers move on to the finals of the Super Treasure Hunt races at the Big O. This time, Rez gets the pole position, followed by Arlo. Will Rez in that pole position take advantage of it and put another track record down? It looks like he's fast. He's almost out of frame. But followed by Arlo, he spins over to the side. He's on his lid, but he's still moving. Here comes Arlo in reverse. Will Arlo be able to take it? And no, he does not. Rez does a half of a lap on the hood of his car. And Arlo in reverse is unable to pass him. If there was 15 more feet of track, I think Arlo would have taken it. But folks, he did not find the gap. He was unable to get by. Let's watch Rez. He's going so fast. He hits off the top wall, comes down, hits the inside wall, slips onto his side, and as he goes in the last turn, and falls onto his roof. And folks, he has so much speed. He has so much momentum. He has put lubricant on his roof, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he shaves his hair off of that roof to go faster like swimmers do. But folks, he crosses the finish line in first place still with 24 points, followed by Arlo at 20. And folks, it looks like Arlo and Rez will be the ones going into the finals here. They have clinched their position, but we're going to race this race anyways and see what happens. As we suspected, Rez is out front, folks, and fired away. He has whizzed down the track, and he might just walk away from everybody here and put on a show once again. He rolls again across the finish line. That car is so fast, he can't even keep it on the track. But folks, at least he's crossing the finish line and putting the points on the board. And that will do it, folks, for group number one. We are going to watch this replay. Remember, Rez set the track record from the outside lane. He was trying to do it again here, but he got a little too speedy, a little too out of control. And then Evo, into the last turn, landed hard, flipped over, and skidded across the finish line. We'll watch that from the chase cam, and then again from the finish line cam as he slides across the finish line. I did not catch the time, but it would, would probably be pretty fast. And there you go, folks. 28 points for Rez, 23 for Arlo. They are moving on to the finals. Those points will be added to their overall points from Ring Your Rallycross times two. And we'll see who wins the Super Treasure Hunt Finals. Welcome back, viewers. Glue yourselves to your seat because we have group two of the Super Treasure Hunts. And boy, it's going to be an exciting one, so stick around. That is an understatement, Patrick. But before we get started, let's take a look at the points leaderboard here. This is a total of points currently between Rainier Rallycross Super Treasure Hunt Tournament and the Big O. Again, top points overall to win the Grand Championship. But folks, there will be a victor on the Big O, and we will find out which two cars are going into the finals right here, right now. The action starts early as Lone Star spins around and Numbskull is out in front. He's gonna walk away with it, he does a drift through the turn, slowing down. Is anyone gonna catch him? Monstar catches him and takes him on the outside, and Papa Pugsley takes him on the outside as well, and oh my gosh, we have a crash. Ross Sun God is on his roof. Oh my gosh, folks, that half of that lap was so action-packed. Let's slow it down for you and take a closer look. Ned, what a way to start group two. There you see Lone Star spinning out. We thought Numbskull might have the lead. He was out in front, but he hits the top there, does a little drift, and folks, he slides sideways, losing all his momentum. He does get straightened out, but watch this. As they enter the turn four, Lone Star comes in reverse and takes the outside, takes the high road, and passes on the last turn as they go into the finish line. Also, watch this, Papa Pugsley is able to get around Numbskull as well, down into the final stretch. Lone Star takes first, Papa Pugsley second, and Numbskull third. But watch this, Ross Sun God comes down the final stretch, clips a crack in the track, and goes airborne, folks, spinning around in the air, eventually landing on his roof and coming to a stop. Well, holy cannoli, Patrick. What an action-packed first round there. We're gonna check out to see if Ross Sun God is okay. We have Lone Star leading the pack with four points, Numbskull with two, Papa Pugsley with three and we head into race two. The drivers rotate one position clockwise. We have Ross Sun Guy in the pole position, where he looks like he's sideways blocking Lone Star for some reason. 
letting Papa Pugsley and Numskull get out in front. Numskull putting some pressure on Papa Pugsley. Papa Pugsley can't handle the pressure and spins over. Numskull now traveling in reverse down the track. Will he be able to hold everybody out and take it sideways across the finish line? Numskull takes first. And folks, we see Lone Star coming in second in reverse as well. Unfortunately, we do not see Papa Pugsley or Raw Sun God. It's possible that Raw Sun God got tangled up with Papa Pugsley when he was on the roof of his car. There you see them sliding sideways. Papa Pugsley's too high as he's exiting the turn. Numbskull successfully navigates around Papa Pugsley, but gets a little squirrely, heads backwards down the track towards the finish line. And we're not sure what happened to Lone Star, but he, he got by the wreckage as well. And there he is trickling across the finish line. Race two did not disappoint, Patrick. That right there is some crazy action here on the Big O. Yeah, now we've been getting a lot of complaints about these turns. And uh, let me tell you, we've been working with the track crew and we're working on a solution that evens out these turns a little bit, makes them a little bit smoother and mitigates the risk of crashing uh, and I think the drivers will appreciate that as we make those modifications going into the next tournament NASCAR generations. Yeah, Patrick, the owner of the track wanted to push and open the track as soon as possible. I personally didn't think those turns were ready, but I hope they get those things worked out and these cars start running smooth because, folks, I want to see six cars wide in the NASCAR generations tournament coming up next. And sorry, we missed a little bit of that race here. We're going to slow it down and watch the replay. Lone Star pulls a full 360 as Ross Sun God is blocking some other cars in the back. But there he is, folks. Oh, just out of frame there, you see Papa Pugsley on the side of his car. He must have entered that turn a little bit too high and came down on his side. Lone Star taking first place in race number three, followed by Ross Sun God and Numskull. Man, I'm not sure if this is a race against the other cars or a race against the track just to see if you can finish. But we got to keep on keeping on. We're going to head into race four. They rotate one position. We have Numskull in the pole position, followed by Papa Pugsley. Lone Star is fast. He's on the outside. Him and Numskull have been battling back and forth all day. Will he be able to make it on the outside? No, he does not. He takes the inside. Bumps into Numskull. Numskull crashes. Numskull's off the track. Oh, my gosh. Lone Star in reverse. Taking it down the track as fast as he can towards the finish line. Will he be able to hold it off? Lone Star sliding across for first place. Papa Pugly second. Raw Stun God for third. Patrick, I'm at a loss of words here. It looked like Lone Star was after Numbskull or something. They cut in the inside, gave him a little bump. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but Lone Star bumps into Numbskull. Numbskull slides too high and flies completely off the track. That's the first time we have ever seen a car go off into the infield of the Big O. I hope Numskull is okay. We'll have the track crew and medical crew checking on him to make sure he can go on. But we see Numskull, sorry Numskull, not Numskull, Lone Star coming in reverse. Numskull is off the track somewhere. And Papa Pugsley coming in for second, both of them sliding sideways. And also Ross Sungod in third coming across. No Numskull. Yeah, you know it's an epic crash when they fly off the track on the inside of the track. Not the outside, but the inside of the track. Looks like Numskull is okay. He is back on the track and in the inside back lane, pushing Ross Sun God through that turn. Will they be able to get out in front of Lone Star? They do, but Ross Sun God putting the block on the whole entire pack. He says, if I can't be faster than them, I'll just block them the entire time. Blocking but not blocking good enough. We have Numskull and Papa Pugsley to get by and looks like Lone Star got by Raw Sun God as well. We'll slow that down for you. Right out of the first turn, we have Raw Sun God trying to put a block maneuver on the entire pack. Unfortunately, he was un unsuccessful here after the second turn. Numskull was able to make it on the inside. Papa Pugsley was able to make it on the inside. And then Lone Star right here, over on the outside, you see on the right side of the frame, able to get by. We have some, some action here between Papa Pugsley and, and Numskull as they do synchronized backwards drifting to the last turn and across the finish line in reverse. Numskull, Papa Pugsley, and Lone Star. And forwards, thank you very much for being forward, Ross Sun God. Taking a look at the points, we have Lone Star out front, which is no surprise. He was the winner of the Rainier Rallycross Super Touchdown Tournament, and he's a contender for the Grand Championship if he could put enough points on the board in this group and move on to the finals. Lone Star out front. Nope, that's Numbskull out front, followed by Papa Pugsley, Ross Sun God. Numbskull 
seems to like racing in reverse more than forward in this track. He spins around backwards and he is cruising, but he decides to spin it back around for the finish. And Papa Pugsley putting some pressure on him, coming right behind. Yeah, Patrick, it seems like Numskull has the weight distribution in his car a little, little wrong. He might be set up for drag racing. You know, those Fox Body Mustangs are usually good in a straight line, but you really don't see them turning at all. They're kind of tanks. So that might be why he throws it in reverse and decides to race down the track backwards. It might just work out better for him. He seems to be keeping it on the track like that, except for when he gets hit by other people and flies off the track completely. Whoa, whoa, Ned, was that a jab at Lone Star? We interviewed him after the race. Megan, the reporter, was down trackside with him, and he said it was not intentional. It seemed very genuine. He said it was not intentional. He tried to take the inside. Numskull came down and bumped him and got a little out of control. Rubbing's racing. The show must go on. Nobody died. Everyone's in good shape and back on the track. I wasn't implying anything. All I can say is karma is a B. Speaking of karma, Lone Star goes on his roof. I told you so. That darn karma, Papa Pugsley out in front, leading the pack and taking the win in this race, followed by Numskull and Raw Sun God. Lone Star on his roof. I won't say it was karma, but it was karma. Even though he said it wasn't intentional. I mean, accident or not, he's gonna come back to you. He takes that too high, rolls over there as he comes down that turn. Numskull maneuvering around Lone Star perfectly to the outside and taking second place right behind Papa Pugsley and putting some more points on the board. Speaking of points, let's take a look at the point scoreboard. We have 19 for Numskull, Lone Star with 18, Papa Pugsley with 16. Raw Sun Guide is out of it, folks, but the other three are still in it. Anything can happen. We could get a DNF and Papa Pugsy could finish and move on to the finals. We see what happens right here in race number eight. This has been eight action-packed laps. Lone Star out front. Will he be able to hold it? Papa Pugsy right behind him. Will he be able to take? Oh my gosh, the camera hits something, shakes like crazy. Lone Star spins around backwards. It's Papa Pugsy on his roof. Numbskull chasing after Lone Star, and they cross the finish line. One, two, and holy cannoli, what just happened to Papa Pugsy? Whoa, Papa Pugsley was doing so good. I thought he might have had an opportunity to move on and take the finals position instead of Numbskull. But folks, he flips over. Watch out what happens right here. The camera strikes something. Everything goes haywire. Papa Pugsley hits something on the side of the road. We'll take a slower look at that. He slides sideways, clips the sidewall, and just rolls it over. I don't even think he hit anything. I'm not sure what happened there. But Numbskull comes pile driving through taking second place, unable to pass Lone Star as they cross the finish line. Lone Star for sure will move on, and joining him in the finals will be Numskull. What an epic finish to that eight laps. We have a tie between Lone Star and Numskull. No race off, they will both go to the finals. Thank you, Ross Sungod and Papa Pugsley for being here. This is the points leaderboard. Tied for first place is Lone Star in reds with 74 points. Who will win the grand championship? Folks, tune in next week for the finals to see who takes it. Welcome back to the big O. Oh, we have the Super Treasure Hunt Finals. Today we'll have a champion on the big O as well as a grand champion overall. Let's hop right into the action of the finals race number one. We have Lone Star in that Mercury Cougar on the inside lane pole position followed by Rez in that Evo. Rez is known to be fast. Will he be able to get around Lone Star here in race number one? Arlo and Numskull tangle up in the back and spin around a little bit. They are battling. Rez does get by Lone Star, but Lone Star is on his tail. Will Lone Star pass him? Rez in reverse comes across the finish line. Lone Star in second, Numskull in third, and Arlo coming in in fourth place. Let's slow it down for you. Let's take a closer look on the tiny track car's instant replay package. Lone Star gets a little sideways. Rez is able to get by on the outside, but keep an eye on Numskull and Arlo in the background. Numskull putting a block on Arlo, making sure he does not get by and get that extra point. Meanwhile, Rez and Lone Star are slipping, sliding, battling for first and second place, but Rez comes away with it, and <laughs> first, second, third place comes by in reverse, and Arlo comes by forward. Thank you, Arlo, for keeping that thing straight. All right, race number two, we shuffle, we shift, we spin one position clockwise. Rez in the pole position, followed by Arlo right behind him. After the turn, after the halfway point, after four races, we do shuffle the order, and then we'll continue that same clockwise rotation, so every driver gets a shot at the pole position. 
but the order is mixed up. And Rez putting on a show here, flying down the track. He spins around in that last turn to see if anyone's behind him and puts down a scorching 15.566, which is a respectable time, but we have seen faster out of that Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 10. Just out of frame there, you see Lone Star and Arlo battling, but Lone Star flips it over. Arlo and Numskull are able to get by eventually, but Lone Star does slow them up there. And unfortunately, we have a, a DNF, a DNF for Lone Star from Live Young Diecast in that Mercury Cougar. I love that Cougar. I think that's a 68 Cougar, if I, if I, if I uh, would to guess. All right, Arlo in the pole position. Numskull behind him. But look at Rez. Rez is out front in the outside lane. Will Lone Star be able to get by? Arlo puts a slight block on Lone Star. He is not able to get by. And Rez flying. Rez pulling away again from the pack. Putting down another scorching fast time of 15.633. And four more points on the board. Let's take a look at that slow down here. Watch that battle between Lone Star and Arlo. Numskull gives him a love tap from the back. He says, let me by. But he did not get by. Arlo drifting across the finish line. It looks like Numskull does eventually pass Lone Star as he trickles in for fourth place. Lone Star is one of the trucks, one of the cars, one of the vehicles in contention for the Grand Championship. Coming into this finals, him and Rez both had 74 points. So whoever comes away with more points in this finals will be the Grand Champion of the Super Treasure Hunt. But first, we also have to find out who is the champion on the Big O. Here we go, race That's number four. That's what he's doing. Get the race live. Why we'll have to start the race an hour early? I just got here. Uh, no, Patrick, I think we started right on time. I think you said 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Is, isn't that correct? No, you didn't. It's 6 p.m. Pacific, the same time we start the race every single week. Well, you're here now. Uh, that's all that matters, I guess, Patrick. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for being part of the show. I guess that explains why the stands are only half full. We're, uh, we started an hour early. I'm sorry about that, folks. But the show must go on. We're in race four, and let's slow it down for you and watch that replay here. Numskull in reverse. He will take this one. Look at that battle between Arlo and Rez. Arlo comes out victorious. Rez spins around backwards, allowing Lone Star to pass as well. Then he gets angry and spins out Lone Star, but is unable to pass as he crosses the finish line. All right, well, catch me up. What do we got going on here? Whoa, Rez winning first second and third races with four points, putting on a clinic out there. He, folks, might just walk away with this one. I don't know if anyone will catch him. Patrick, you know what they say, it's not over to the Lady Sings. And we have Lone Star in the pole position. Will he be able to put some points on the board and pull ahead of Rez? He's going by the expression, if you can't beat him, block him. So he blocked everybody and then taught Numskull how to do the block while he walks away with it. But he spins around backwards. Numskull in reverse, comes on the inside. Numskull passes, Numskull, Arlo, Rez, Arlo, Numskull, Lone Star, Rez, Arlo. That's exactly how they finished, I think. That was so close, I couldn't even tell who was who was there. It was like a purple and green black blur. Yeah, good thing we had the replay package. We're gonna slow that down for you here and watch what happened. Numskull putting a block on Rez and Arlo, and then Cat pulls himself in reverse after Lone Star, who spins around Numskull takes the inside, pulls a fancy maneuver right between Rez and Lone Star and takes first place, followed by Lone Star, Rez, and Arlo in fourth place. That's some fancy driving in reverse in, in a Mustang nonetheless. It must be those fancy ID wheels he's got on that thing and that beautiful Super Treasure Hunt Spectre Flame paint. Well, they all have Super Treasure Hunt paint, but Apparently the Mustangs is better. Now Numskull in the pole position. Will he be able to take advantage as getting pushed down the track by Rez? Rez checks sideways just a little bit. Lone Star taps Rez, spins him out, and then Lone Star spins out himself. But Rez gets by Numskull and spins around and takes it down the track for the finish line. Followed by Numskull, Lone Star, and Arlo in fourth place again, but finishing and putting more points on the board. Now I'll tell you what, this is exciting racing, but I really wish this track crew would come up with a better solution for these corners to minimize these cars flipping and spinning. And uh, I know you said they're on it, but what's the update on that? Well, we're in the R&D stage right now, Patrick. We have uh, been working with Russ at Spoolheads on a brand new, new and improved turn. We're testing and tuning right now. And we're hoping, fingers crossed, knock on wood, a watch pot never boils, whatever the expressions are, that these turns perform better and we have clean, consistent racing. What we wanna see here is the faster cars 
being able to go out in front, run clean, and put in the laps in a tight pack down the track. Because the NASCAR Generations, folks, is going to be six cars running at once on this track, and they're coming up in just a short period of time. And with the NASCAR Generations, we have the Loopster Halftime Event, where teams link together their Loopster castings, and they race together down the track. Ned, would you hush up about the next tournament? Look at all the action going on in this track. We had people flipping over, people off the track, people hitting other people, lead changes out the wazoo, and a DNF from Rez, which what, how will that affect the points? We shall see right now. Let's watch this replay. Rez is out front. He enters that turn, goes a little bit too high, comes down, catches the juven, flips that Evo over. Numbskull right in his tail. Numbskull can't get by. But watch Numbskull as it come out of the turn. I believe he gets hit really hard by Lone Star right there, catapulting him even further ahead. Lone Star is able to keep the momentum and take second place. And we see Arlo might have got hung up by Rez just a little bit, but was able to get by. Patrick, look at those scores. Numbskull takes first place and moves out front with 21 points. 19 for Rez and a tie between Lone Star and Arlo. In this eighth and final race, the cars you want to keep an eye on are Rez and Numbskull in that outside lane. Will Rez be able to get out in front on the outside lane? And will Numbskull be able to get by or will he get stuck behind? And oh, Rez rolls over. Arlo on the outside. Now Arlo pulling away with it. What will happen with Lone Star and Numbskull? Will they get stuck behind Rez? A, a Rez DNF means he will not be the champion of the Big O. Arlo comes in first. Lone Star comes in second. And here comes Numbskull, gets by Rez and takes third place. And folks, I believe that will make Numbskull the champion of the Big O. But we're gonna slow that down for you and then we'll show the points totals here. Take a look at Rez. He enters that turn a little too high, flips that Evo over on his hood. And in the last ditch effort, he tries to put a block maneuver on. And I think he's hoping someone pushes him down the track so he's able to finish and get some points. But Arlo is able to get by. Arlo out front, close and personal with Arlo there as he takes the victory in race number four. And then Lone Star trickles by. He must have got caught up with Rez just a little bit. And Numbskull must have really got caught up with Rez, but is able to get by and take third place and two points. And folks, that does make Numbskull the champion, the winner of the big O portion of the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament. And an update on the overall grand championship, we have Rez out front with 93 points, Lone Star with 91, and Arlo with 71. Congratulations, Rez, on being the grand champion. Congratulations for Numbskull for being the champion of the big O. And thank you to everybody who has raced here at the big O for the Super Treasure Hunt Tournament.